This is Matt with Mel Express Radio. I have with me Mike D of Kill Switch Engage, Death Ray Vision, Overcast, just to name a few of his projects. <laughs> How are you today, man? Hey, thanks for having me. I super appreciate the interview. I appreciate your time. The so Death Ray Vision's third album entitled No Mercy from Electric Eyes is set to be released June 30th on Metal Blade. What can you tell fans about the upcoming release? God, we're just so stoked to get it out. Um, we passed it in. We recorded it last year. And we passed it in in October. So it's just been this big waiting game to finally get it out. It's uh, more punk than anything maybe that we've done before, just maybe based on the vocals. It's got maybe more southern rock confused, you know, seat thrown in there. It's definitely got the hardcore and metal vibe to it. Um, we're just trying to take it up another notch. and It's sort of a restart. Uh, a new singer, Keith Bennett, who bass player for Wrecking Crew, and he was in a band called Panzer Bastard. Long time, <clears throat> just an amazing uh, old school hardcore guy, probably first generation Boston hardcore guy. I would assume yes on that one. Um, <clears throat> I remember we were in between singers, and the idea to ask Keith if he wanted to join the band came up, and no one thought that he would join the band. Too old school. Too cool for school. <laughs> really. Too cool for, this, for Death Ray Vision, that's for sure. Um, but he agreed to do it, so we just grabbed on him as, as tightly as possible, yanked him into a practice space, and started practicing as much as we possibly could before he said no. Um, but as far as the record goes, he, he killed it. Uh, it's, it's definitely... Slightly different than maybe the last few Death Ray records, but I think uh, better in a, in different in a good way, and I think the fans will really appreciate that. And Death Ray Vision has had a different singer for each one of your three albums. Do you feel each album brings something different for the fans? Um, yeah, for sure. It definitely has, they def all three have different vibes. Um, you know, the original idea was just to be with, just to have Brian um, and myself play songs, just get a band together and just play in between touring, just something to do, uh, something anyways to do. Um, so unfortunately, after this, the first record, uh, Brian had moved pretty far away and it just seemed like it wasn't going to work out much. So we had to switch gears and, and, and Jeff came in. It was going really well for a while, but sometimes these things just don't work out. And uh, sometimes you record a record and then figure out, oh, this is not working out, which may or may not have been the case. Um, but, uh, you know, getting Keith in the band has really revitalized us and, and uh, it's the shot in the arm that we need. It. And it's just got way more of a, a well, I guess, uh, harder vibe to it. Harder, harder and more legitimate vibe to it. I mean, uh, the last every record is, is to me, anytime anyone says any of the titles, I laugh because they're all jokes. Uh, the song titles are kind of jokes. They're all just meant to be tough guy stuff coming from the skinniest, weakest dudes ever. So in that respect, the whole time we were writing all this stuff and making these funny names for things, we were just like, oh, we really want to be a hardcore band from New York from like late 80s, early 90s. That was kind of the goal. And you kind of need those tough guy kind of, you know, things and, and uh, song titles in order to, to get that uh, a point across. Uh, but we just weren't that type. We weren't those type of people. We're the most non-violent people in the world. But the funny thing is that Keith being a legitimate tough guy <laughs> legitimizes uh, the band and now we, we can write these songs with uh, less tongue-in-cheek and more, uh, like I said, legitimacy uh, when, when he's speaking from the heart or, or just being uh, heavy-handed with some, some lyrics uh, and uh, vibes that he's going for. Yeah, it's so funny. That's exactly what I was just thinking as soon as you had said you maybe you didn't have that image, but after seeing, like, Blaze video you guys put up for Behead the King, and I was looking at photos from your show at Hampton Beach in New Hampshire recently. It's like, uh, yo, he's pretty intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is great. Uh, it, it actually works out for the vibe of the band a lot better than skinny, you know, white kids trying to, trying to pull that stuff off. But uh, it's it's so much fun being in a band with him. He's, he's an incredible. 
incredibly sweet person, but uh, get him on stage. And that was our second show, that show in, in uh, Hampton Beach. Uh, I'm glad you got to see it because um, it was really, really fun. And uh, just seeing the video back, I, I had GoPro'd a bunch of that stuff. And just seeing how comfortable Keith was on stage made me extra comfortable and just excited for the future. Um, you just never know how, how these things are going to go. And that guy just seemed like he was born to be in the band. And it really fits. It finally fits. I think cause everything's just so cohesive now. Uh, I think it's smooth sailing. And you put it out there, you were a fan of Keith's previous work as well. So from being a fan of his previous work as a musician, how was it bringing him on board? It was scary. This uh, school hardcore guy uh, hanging out with us. We were, I think, we're probably second or third generation young kids, even though we're all super old. We <laughs> weren't compared to him. We we're just like a, a, another generation apart. So we just weren't sure if he was going to take it serious or. Um, I, I really did not think he was going to say yes. <laughs> so as soon as he said yes, we just latched onto him. And said, let's go. Let's do this. And uh, I just immediately started practicing for the record. Um, so it's just it's been everyone's on the same page. Everyone's just really excited. And uh, Keith is kind of steering the ship now. He kind of knows what he's going for. He kind of knows what the band should be doing and what shows we should be doing. So we're kind of letting him. Uh, spirit and, and go in his direction so hopefully that'll take us to some good places and you recently released uh, a song and a video for Behead the King do you feel like that song gives fans an idea on what to expect from the full album I really hope so it encompasses a lot of the you know breaks and, and melodic stuff that we do it's got a, a chorus that may not be sing thingy but you can sing along to it and uh, the overall just tough vibe that, that we're trying to get through to the fans uh, we for the first time ever we uh, signed to Metal Blade and we're on a big label and it, it's strange when the label is so easy to work with and they asked us what we wanted to do for a single and I'm so used to record labels telling me it's going to be this and this and this and being maybe even slightly disappointed that they didn't choose the track that I, I like that doesn't mean everyone else is going to like it just because I like it. Um, but in this way, it was completely different where they just said, well, what tracks do you guys want to do for videos? And I was, I don't know. My brain fell in my ear. I was scrambling. Like, I have no clue. I'm used to everyone telling me what to do <laughs> when it comes to stuff. Uh, so we, we picked uh, both songs for the videos and uh, hopefully, have you heard the record? Just uh, Behead the King so far, but I can't wait to hear the full album. Okay, yeah. The uh, the next single came out, I think, the night of that North, uh, the Hampton Beach show. I think Northampton. Um, so, uh, yeah, From the Rafters is out now as well. More of a, it's got way more of a hardcore vibe to it. But I think I think it's a really good representation, representation or at least a good lure to get people to check out the rest of the stuff. And it's notable, obviously, your career with Killswitch Engage, and you've been with Overcast, and I know other members of the band have had their hands in other bands such as Seamless and Living Wreckage. How would you really explain the similarities and differences to Death Ray Vision to everyone else's projects? Hmm. Well, we definitely went out of our way to, to not do things like some of those other projects. We're, we're tuning to more of a old school hardcore tuning of E drop D. Uh, it's definitely higher in the tuning range, and it feels more old or chuggy. Uh, so we try to do that. That's definitely one way of separating everything. Um, I don't know. A lot of times it's just Pete, Pete Cortez, who was in Overcast, seamless, who's the guitarist for Death Ray Vision, just, just rips. He just does he just records so much material. <laughs> it's insane. And we have to just pick and choose. And we have to tell him, stop writing. We're done. We have enough material now. Um, but it's just stuff that flows out of him constantly. Um, and I, I think because it's someone um, else writing in a band that I'm in, it sounds completely different than like Killswitch. Um, where I, I write for both bands, but we 
you can kind of tell probably what songs I write because I have a certain style to band, but in having other players in the mix, it can rearrange your style and make you play differently and make you feel uh, drums differently, as a matter of fact. Um, so I think in that way, just the players and, and the tuning alone right there will set us apart. And throughout the years since Death Ray Vision have been around, hold on double duty a lot with Kill Switch Engage and Death Ray Vision on the same bill. How do you manage such a busy schedule? It's it's really fun to do all that stuff, to do all that work. I don't know what I would do if I didn't have something to work on or, or I just can't really sit around for too long. I also have a graphic design business, so anytime I'm off tour it's it's all guns of blade <laughs> On tour, off tour. I can do graphic design anywhere. I do it from hotel rooms. I do it. Plus, um, touring is actually incredibly boring. (laughs) You just kind of do stuff for like an hour a day. Um, And then the rest of the day, you just got to figure out something else. So I figure out something else by writing new music. I figure out something else by doing lots of graphic design. When I get home and there's nothing to do and I'm sitting on my couch, I'm like, I wish I was playing again. Death Death Revision is there to pick up. Back and, uh, and and uh, provide me with something to do. I mean, uh, I can't tell you the amount of family functions I've been to in the past 25 years. It's kind of sad, um, but that's the career path that I've taken, unfortunately. Out of Death Ray Vision's three albums, what is one you would suggest to a new fan and why? I think the new one definitely brings it. Um, and mostly because that's the singer that we're stay, sticking with, and uh, he just the overall vibe. It's just uh, if you're free in New York hardcore, I think you're gonna really like this. Is there anything that we haven't covered that you'd like to throw in? Well, uh, let's see. Death Revision's playing a lot of shows coming up. Uh, we're gonna be in Northampton um, this Friday. Saturday in New York City, Sunday in Rhode Island, and then the record comes out June 30th. We're going to have a big record release show in Boston. We're really excited to play most of the record for people. And uh, the, I guess the funny part is that we already got the records and we've been selling them, but um, that is the record release show, and, and we're really excited to play that. Uh, Kill Switch is going to be going to Europe in August first time since the pandemic that we've been to Europe, so we're really excited to go. We're doing Vakken again, which we haven't done. I don't even think we shot the video for This Is Absolution the last time we played Vakken, so that's probably 12, 10 years ago, maybe. I don't know. Well, how are we so It's been a long time. And uh, we're doing Dynamo, first time ever. Really excited about it. Then we're doing Bloodstock, which is in the UK. And uh, they asked me to do an art gallery at Budstock. So there's, I believe, a building that's going to have, you know, 20 or so of, of my art prints hanging up in that gallery. And really excited for people to go check out the stuff from, I've, I've been doing. Dark Icon Designs since 1992. So there's a lot of artwork that I had to sift through and, and find the, the good stuff to put it on the wall. We're really excited for people to check that out as well, but I guess I have a lot of stuff going on. That's about it, though. <laughs> That's awesome, man. My last question for you, what are your top three records that you've been a part of throughout your career, and why? Top three records. Uh, Live and Just Breathing, because it would be signed to Roadrunner Records, no one believed in the band that we were signed to Roadrunner Records. It was just like a Pipe dream, we just, and then we we were like, okay, we're gonna do one and done. Let's do a record, one record that we could be extremely proud of, and then we'll just get thrown off the label, and they and, and say we'll just go and find out another smaller label to be a part of, and uh, it worked out. It was just one of those records that was made for us, and we gave it to the masses, and people fell in love with it too. So that was amazing coming from bands that played small VFW halls tiny little venues uh, to like 10 people uh, to make something completely out of nothing and kind of formulate your own style and pray to God that it worked 
and just put it out there and it actually does. But it's a really cool feeling. And that record will always have be uh, that would be the number one. I think just be a, being a part of that record. Uh, like I said, it came together really slowly over a pandemic, probably over a year and a half, just to write it and get everything <clears throat> solid, get the new singer up to speed, and and start getting everything done. But just incredibly proud of how it came out. Really excited that we were able to do it on a, a pretty big label like Metal Blade. There's such killer history there. And everyone there is so incredibly nice. <clears throat> Let's see, third record that I played on or that I, I designed? I thought you played on. Okay. Uh, hmm. I guess I guess uh, As Daylight Dies would probably be up there. Probably As Daylight Dies or, or End of Heartache. Just just due to the success of both those records and just the fact that people actually like something that, that I was doing <laughs> for like the first time ever. Um, it's a really cool feeling. Uh, I never thought I'd care that anybody liked anything that I was doing because I played in so many bands that people could give a shit about. Um, but the fact that people actually liked it and, and, and we were drawing fans and we were actually able to headline these shows and play festivals. There's just this growing entity that was it felt unstoppable until it stopped. Um, <clears throat> so it was just a, it was a great feeling to be a part of those three records for sure. As a fan, I loved hearing "Reborn to Kill Again" when that came out. Uh, two, oh, thank you. Yeah, two thousand eight. Just because growing up on Overcast and then like here to come back with like, you know, I mean, of course, like nothing takes away from when you know you guys had that raw production that really brought up that hardcore sound, but kind of like. You know, that, that was definitely, I feel like, something to introduce, you know, newer fans to, like, that Overcast was back, you know what I mean? Well, that was the idea for that. Um, you know, Overcast always recorded records so fast that all the mistakes were there. Everything was pretty apparent. And a lot of it was just not done properly, <clears throat> just because we didn't care. We just wanted to get it done and get out, get it out, just play shows, just rock. Um, but with that, with the Reborn to Kill Again, we were able to sit down in the studio, we went in the studio with somebody who really liked the band growing up, Adam D, who's an incredible producer, and uh, I, I feel like we got to get that, those songs as tight and package them up as, as good as they could possibly ever get, and in that way, that's what we wanted to do, we wanted to finally record, give the songs the justice they, that they needed, uh, record them properly and super tight and with great production. And then just put it out and see what happened. And I wasn't sure how people were going to take it because sometimes, you know, a lot of these re-recorded records um, get pretty bad reviews. But it seemed like people really dug that that we did that. <clears throat> you know, it didn't. The band didn't like grow to big heights or anything like that. But it definitely like reestablished the band after not being a band for a long time. And now, you know, so we have so many records that we play the same. <laughs> same overcast songs over and over again um whenever we talk about okay we're going to play a show or something like that we always pick reborn to kill again songs and play that arrangement just so everyone knows what arrangement or otherwise we'd just be you'd see us on stage staring at each other playing the wrong thing um <laughs> but that's like our bible which is funny that's about the questions i got for, uh, for you it's been great talking to you and I've always appreciated, especially coming from Massachusetts, what Killswitch Engage has just bought to the metal scene, as well as the other projects. And it's been great watching you and all your projects grow. And again, just bringing so much, not just to the New England scene, but, you know, to the metal scene across the world. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. You make me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the interview. I'm uh, just excited for this Death Ray Vision project to finally come out. It's been so long. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, definitely, and you know, best wishes to you and the rest of the camp. Um, on, and have a fun, safe tour coming up. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>